Welcome everyone to another episode of Bazelli's Wine TV, the most interesting wine channel on the internet. Why are we the most interesting wine channel on the internet? Because we consider wine a, a food. Thank you to perennial special guest Holly Rocco Ferracci of Republic National Distributing Company, a top 10 place to work and they're also actively hiring right now so please yes. go to their website. They need drivers and mostly drivers. Warehouse or, crew, salespeople. Oh, yes, yeah. oh, we love that they're putting America to work. So please go to the website. What is the website, Holly? Uh, it's rndc-usa.com. Awesome, thank you so much. So today we have another special episode for you guys. You guys are getting so spoiled because Holly and I work hard on crafting compelling content for you. We have today brand ambassador for Foley Family Wines, Christian Guest. An old friend of mine, we were cellmates together, we made a lot of good wine That's in right. prison, and so I'm so delighted to, um, I'm so delighted in his success now, um, he's been with Foley for how long? A little over two and a half years. For two and a half years, and uh, yeah, like I said, we do go way back, just very excited, excited to meet with, uh, you know, with Christian and to taste these wines. Foley, Foley has not been in the wine game for very long, they actually started in 1996, which is nothing to compare to some of the other producers that yeah. Holly and I have met with. Yeah. But nonetheless, they have been on a tear. They have enjoyed explosive growth. Tour de force. Tour de force. They have some amazing stellar brands in their portfolio today. Sebastiani, Banshee, Eos, Roth. Maris, one of my Maris, favorites. Maris, I mean, you know, how could I miss Maris? <laughs> <laughs> They are awesome, so we're so excited to meet with Christian and taste these wines today. And as you know, Christian, because you watch our show faithfully, I appreciate that. You and Holly's beloved mother. Um, <laughs> shouts to mom. Shouts to mom. Shouts to mom. Watch our show faithfully. Christian, I always start with, uh, how'd you get into the wine business and how'd you end up with Foley today, buddy? Yeah, great question. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I think I've known you since... I guess when Prosciutto Mott's was still on the menu. Correct. It was always so R.I.P. to Prosciutto Mott's. It's, it's back. Is it back? Yeah, it's back. Oh, that's back. good. All right, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta come get one. Uh, but no, I got into wine business out of college, so was recruited by um, the largest wine company in the world. They have a, a management development program, and so they recruited the college that I was in. You know, really started with no expectation of knowing anything really about wine, really more of a, you know, assumption that you probably knew the difference between several different light beers that might be on the market coming straight <laughs> out of college, right? Uh, but they, they put you through um, a really extensive training program. And so worked, started in Montgomery County, Maryland, moved to Georgia, was down there for quite a few years, and then moved to uh, Richmond. Jesus, I've been in Virginia now about eight, about eight years. So moved over to Foley about two and a half years ago, as I, as I mentioned, and have been really enjoying myself. I bet because the portfolio is is very impressive, and you guys just bought Ferrari Corano yeah, not too long yeah, about ago. About a year ago now, so a really nice addition to our portfolio. You know, a jewel mm -hmm. of Sonoma County, and it took our vineyard holdings in Sonoma from uh, you know like about the sixth largest to now the third largest behind Gallo and Jackson. So really excited about that, and really plays in nicely to some of the things that we're going to talk about here at the end with our Alexander Valley holdings. As well. And I think um, let's not be remiss about how you guys now have gotten to where you are. It's really been through women's empowerment. I mean, you guys are a force when it comes to putting females in charge yeah, and leadership roles. You have multiple winemakers who are female executives. Um, I think the founders' daughters also play. Yeah, Courtney uh, is, is one of our winemakers and is really the next generation of our, our family-owned company, which is cool. Uh, so she uh, some you know makes some of our wines at Chalk Hill in, in the estate program, but also is taking a greater leadership role uh, with the Ferrari Corona acquisition. We um, hired on that whole winemaking team, which is a, a full female winemaking team. But then we promoted Sarah Quieter the, to our VP of winemaking. So now she oversees all of our domestic wine production. Uh, so she's really been tasked with putting new people in the right seats for our wineries. So you know we've got a new winemaker. We'll talk about it, Roth. We moved over our Maris winemaker over to Banshee. So a lot of shuffling and, and reorganizing and getting us the best quality winemakers in the right you know, properties for our portfolio. And then our marketing team is predominantly female as well. So besides not being the Cali Cab show, we also, <laughs> um, one of the major themes of the show is, is uh, 
female leadership, women, women's empowerment. Um, I mean, Holly is a testimony to that. I mean, uh, leading uh, ambassador for Republic National, also soon to have her Master of Wine. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she had a hellacious week last week, wrapped up a few papers and exams, I think. So we, ha this is a long awaited tasting and we're, we're really anxious. So whenever you want to start pouring, uh, Christian, be my yeah, guest. Yeah, we will. Oh, Holly. Thanks, Holly. All mm -hmm. right. So to tell you guys a little bit more about Foley, um, as Mike mentioned, you know, founded in 1996 by Bill Foley, his first winery, Lynn Court, named after his two daughters, Lindsay and Courtney. Uh, down in the Santa Rita Hills um, area. So uh, making some really beautiful Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Um, and then, you know, just collected wineries, purchased wineries throughout the years, always uh, focusing on estate properties, things that have barrels you can touch, dirt you can kick, you know, uh, tasting rooms that you can go visit when you're out in wine country, which is great. And, uh, you know, just collecting this beautiful portfolio along the way. Um, so we're going to start with Dashwood. This is our Sauvignon Blanc, this is the 2020 vintage. This is the, oh yeah, third consecutive vintage of 90 points or, or better, which we're very excited about. Uh, so Dashwood's founded in 1989 uh, by the Vavasor family. They started their winery in the Awateri Valley of, of Marlborough, New Zealand in 1986. So think of New Zealand back when it was predominantly sheep you know, pastures, you know, thousands of acres of sheep farming. Uh, and they, they planted a lot of that to Sauvignon Blanc. So really, you know, obviously creating a style all to its own in New Zealand now. But Dashwood created by, uh, made, excuse me, by a gentleman named Stu Marfel. Stu grew up next to the Vavasor family. So Stu at nine years old, with his family went over to Vavasor to help pick grapes for the first harvest of that winery. Mm -hmm. So Stu has literally worked every single harvest at Vavasor and Dashwood. So he knows wow. these wines. Yeah, he grew up next door. Um, Stu is the 2018 winemaker of the year in New Zealand. So pretty cool distinction there. And, and this particular wine was the 2020 Marlboro Wine Show champion Sauvignon Blanc. So what that means is they, they blind taste all these Sauvignon Blancs and then they rate them and then they take the you know the best of the best and then they taste them against each other again and then they announce a champion Sauvignon Blanc. So uh, a pretty cool highlight, you know, pretty nice accolade for yeah. you know, this Sauvignon Blanc to be named best of the best by the people of Marlboro, by the, yeah. the wine professionals of Marlboro who have access to you know some of the best wines. Uh, and this is organically produced, yeah? It's sustainably, sustainably, sustainably farmed, yeah. You know, and, and that's true of a lot of your okay. New Zealand uh, producers. Just, I think doing the right thing for the economy, or excuse me, for the environment. Uh, one of the things I like about this, we use 100% recycled glass from New Zealand. So it's it's not trucking in, or you know, I should say, ferrying and boating in lots of recycled glass to make. They're taking glass from New Zealand, recycling that to make the bottle. The label is made from sugar cane. The ink is also. Um, so can we eat the label? I would not write. I would not write this. Maybe not. Not. This is where you're gonna flash up one of those big well, graphics, right? Where the, yeah. Yeah, do not eat do the label. Not, not. Maybe after a couple of glasses. But Holly, um, <laughs> what am I smelling on the nose that is so pronounced? Oh, you're getting lots of uh, passion fruit and gooseberry and guava and just all those really fun tropical fruits. Um, little flint and and minerality crushed stone. Yeah, you get a nice salinity. My mouth mm -hmm. is watering when I'm tasting this wine. You know, Marlborough has two sub-regions that are divided by the, the Southern Alps, connected by a, a road called the Dashwood Pass. That's where we get the name for the wine. So we have the Awateri Valley, which is much smaller. It's colder. It gets this Antarctic jet stream. Uh, so you get, actually get a thicker skin on the Sauvignon Blanc grape, even though it's the same you know, grape as in Wairau, the other larger, warmer area. But you get lower vegetation. So you get... In this wine, you get a little more creaminess mm -hmm. than you know a wine that may be more predominant Wairau fruit. Uh, so we're about 70% in this vintage of Awateri fruit with the balance coming from Wairau. And it's always about you know, 70, 30, 60, 40, uh, vintage to vintage. So a little more elegant, you know, I think, than some. It's not this huge grassy grapefruit bomb. There's a little more lime. There's a little even mm -hmm. like jalapeno in Key here. Key lime. Yeah. yeah. And a little, little nice creaminess. Mm -hmm. That's not found in in all your New Zealand Sauvignon. We taste a lot of Sauvignon Blancs, right, Holly? I, I've never tasted one like this, honestly. 
This yeah, is this very is unique. Really showcasing where this wine is from. Um, I don't, I'm not sure we've had one from these two valleys before, so yeah. it's really going to be unique in the in the range of Sauvignon and Blancs we've tasted for sure. Home run out the gate, Christian. Not too shabby, pal. <laughs> 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 Delicious, and I'm looking at this pricing first, as I always ask, were these prices verified with accounting? Because were these prices ver verified with accounting, Christian? Because these, I mean, this, I don't, I can't believe you want to sell me this Sauvignon Blanc for so cheap. We try to give you our best price. Thank you, and that always, if we save, you save. So please go to CaseWineLife.com, where all of uh, Christian's um, portfolio will be well represented. Free shipping on most cases and don't forget those case discounts guys fantastic uh patio or porch pounder here this Great is for the hot weather you're definitely. sitting outside enjoying the weather yeah. you know alcohol Straight. content is just right i mean how much alcohol do we have in here um 12.5 surprisingly i thought it would be um i don't know less but yeah. just right yeah yeah but bring this to your next party and you will surely impress everybody yeah Oh, for sure, for sure. Yep. I mean, this would. I mean, this would be. I mean, a, a conversational piece at any wedding and, or yeah. divorce or you know. <laughs> divorce party. <laughs> divorce, divorce, party. <laughs> divorce party. Yeah. Is that a thing? It is a thing. Uh, it, it is, it is yeah. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Holly's so, so, Holly's so like she, she's such a beast at what she does. She's oh, any occasion where there's wine involved, she's Try, she's trying to find that angle. Oh, yes, yeah, we'll, we'll find it. it. We'll, we'll find, find it. it. I mean, some people will buy themselves like a fur coat after they get divorced, but you know, some people are like, oh, let's, we're gonna go and we're gonna have a bunch of wine and we're just gonna celebrate freedom and you know, I mean, if that's your thing, let let's embrace it. Yeah, let's embrace it. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's Ten a.m. too. Let's embrace more, Christian. What do we have next? Oh. I'm eyeing this Banshee Pinot Noir. Oh, yeah, this Banshee is, has, mm. has so much. Behind the brand, I, I'm gonna let you elaborate though because I, I'm such a fan yeah. for for funky wines and so. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can catch it on, on the camera when Holly's pouring this, but just the the color of of the Banshee Pinot Noir, you know, I think Banshee's founded in in 2009 uh, by a couple of guys in the Dog Patch neighborhood of San Francisco. So these guys were in the wine business already, doing you know sort of what we're doing now, or you know similar anyway, and they have this love for cool climate Pinot Noir but they don't have the budget to support their love for cool climate Pinot Noir. They, they love Burgundy in particular. Uh, and so the, the good thing is they lived in San Francisco. They lived an hour south of Sonoma County, one of the best places in the world to grow grapes. Can really grow any grape as we'll, we'll move from Pinot Noir into, into Cabernet here in a little bit. But they had this crazy idea that, you know, what if we can make a wine above a price point that, that we drink above a price point that we could afford. So they go to Sonoma, they buy enough grapes to make a few barrels worth of wine and they make the wine. They've got it in barrel, and you know, fast forward a couple, uh, until they're about three weeks out from barreling, or excuse me, from bottling. They have no name and they have no label. It's kind of a problem, right? <laughs> so they're sitting around in one of their apartments with all their significant others, and they're brainstorming. They're they're consuming a large amount of you know wine, I'm sure. And, Sounds like our kind right? of party, know, right? you know? <laughs> And uh, and and so they're brainstorming, and, and one of their dogs starts you know barking up a storm, and one of their significant others says, "Your dog is wailing like a wild banshee." Banshee. So, they, so the aha moment, the light bulb goes off. They <laughs> love this this name, and then you know you can see there's sort of this funky bird uh, on the label. This is actually a physical carving that one of the guys had picked up at a flea market or a swap meet or something like that that he just liked. And so it was, you know, hanging over his mantle. And so they sort of mashed these two things up. Um, and, and that's how we have the name Banshee. So, you know, Banshee is a mystical, you know, uh, beast or spirit. Mystical or disturbed. This but bird. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, no, I, mean it's this, I, I love it either way. I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, disturbance and mysticism. I mean, you, 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 you've got to be on that level to, to get there. I, I love and the so, packaging of I mean, Banshee. I mean, of it, course. It, it catches your eyes. It's eye, just out. being disturbed. Yeah. <laughs> If um, only Italians can learn to make labels like this, but that's yeah. another show. You know, they, but. <laughs> there's no foil on it. We didn't cut the foil off, and that's how it comes. You know, so, so, so when you okay. order the case of wine from casewinelife.com, do not panic. Do not panic that Mike or Holly have been cutting the foils off your bottles. I mean, that is gonna, how it's going to come uh, in the box to you. Uh, but you know, to the wine specifically, you know, back to the color. I mean, you look at this and you go, "There's 
nothing else in here but Pinot Noir. I mean, it's 100 yeah. percent every vintage. I mean, this we is can read the print straight yeah, through. Exactly. You know, this yeah. is the franchise for Banshee. And I'm looking at the legs here. Um, the nose on this is just like the fresh berries mm -hmm. and everything just popping. Wonderful yeah. nose. Got a little tartary in there. Mm -hmm. Some strawberry. Strawberry for sure. You know, this we source grapes from all around Sonoma County. So it's a Sonoma County Appalachian wine. This this has 10 different vineyard sources from throughout the county and then 10 different clones of Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. So if you want a good representation of what Sonoma County should smell like, should taste like in a Pinot, and this is a great opportunity to, to do that. We use only French oak, about 25% new. So we're getting you know the best grapes from around the county, put them in the best barrels, you know, at, at a price that is ridiculous, I think, for what, what you're paying for it. Um, one of my favorite wines. I mean, I think just varietally correct Pinot Noir from Sonoma. Yeah, this is this is beautiful. It's got my mom's name written all over it. Mom, here's a bottle for you. They love their Pinots. The mom loves Pinots. <laughs> yeah. We love Pinots too, especially this Banshee Pinot. Wow, Christian, th this is superb. I love that. Um, I can't taste much oak. No, it, it, I mean, it, it's there, right? I mean, it's 25% new, so... Well we integrated. Do, you know, well, well integrated. integrated, thank you. And I think by not using a ton of new oak, right, you, you're not going to impart a lot of those more, you know, aggressive new oak flavors to it. But using French oak, tighter grains, more elegant, um, I think just putting the right wines, or the right, the right components together. And I think this wine. could, I mean, given <clears throat> the way it's tasting, and this has that beautiful acidity, right. Um, it, it has the the structure from the oak. Uh, you know, this is a 2019, right. but if you were to buy some bottles and then you kind of forget about them a little bit, or if you wanted to lay a few down, you, I think this Pinot Noir could certainly age a little bit sure. and it would just kind of continue to kind of develop and concentrate and just, you know, uh, it is, kind of say, it is kind of saying, maybe forget about me, I'll, I, I'll be a little better for you, but it's so delicious and refreshing right. yeah. out, out, um, out uh, today oh, as, yeah. as we drink it, a 2019 and vintage. Enjoy this now, enjoy this fresh and young, I mean that's right. what this is about, but I do think that you could forget about these bottles for a couple of years and they'd still be delicious. Yeah, so there's, there's nice acidity to yeah. these wines, you know, I think that's... One of the things that our winemakers do a really great job of is, is integrating acidity and tannin structure and making their food friendly wines, mm -hmm. but then also wines if, if, if you're just sitting out, like you said, and enjoying a glass of wine that you don't have to, uh, it's not going to feel like it's ripping your face off or yeah. something like that. I mean, this is a beautiful wine. And you said there's a female winemaker at Banshee. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Alicia Sylvester, we moved her over from Maris, which is our premier uh, Coombsville. She's kind of a rock star. In she's the, pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, she's... The she's, game. She's worked for quite a few different wineries. You know, she won the Golden Shovel Award at, at Sonoma mm -hmm. Trail, um, you know, which is a pretty big deal. First female winemaker to do that. She worked at Lancaster under David Drake before she moved over to Maris. So she knows how to make Bordeaux varietals, which is great because we make other, you know, wines uh, at Banshee. You know, we make a really nice Sonoma Cab, a Rosé, um, Sauv Blanc, um, mm -hmm. and, and a really cool uh, red blend called Mordecai. So which is sort of a kitchen sink. It's like four different growing regions <laughs> with seven grapes. So I'm thinking this might be a 92, 93 point Pinot Noir, Holly? Yeah, we can give it that. I like it, the Bazzelli's uh, wine rating. Uh, I like that. Wine so rating, absolutely. If we haven't rated them before, like Mike Bazzelli, you know, right. Especially because there's a female winemaker um, at Banshee right now. I, I, I get that so well integrated, as Holly said. Delicious Pinot Noir, a risk. Yeah. Two for two, Christian. Sweet. Bam! Sweet. <laughs> this, is a, this is a fun wine, uh, excuse me, tasting room visit too. So if you're in Healdsburg, you know, we're right off the square. You can go in. It's kind of more of a uh, like an apartment vibe. You know, oh, sitting sit cool. in somebody's living room, bunch of nice couches, vinyl collection. Watching Friends. Right. You know, <laughs> a, 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 right yeah, a vinyl collection. You know, <laughs> where you can go you know, put whatever you want on. You can bring your own vinyl. You can take really? vinyl. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You can kind of swap out. So really more of a, a you know just a comfortable. Um, living room environment. So that's the whole culture at Banshee yeah. is like it's very fun. chill, mellow, it's fun, fun, bohemian, um, 100%. zero blanks as we say, or as millennials say these days, zero blanks. Uh, I get it, I get it, but um, I, I do feel like Banshee is just, it's I mean, for the money. So you're getting so much value for the money mm -hmm. and it is in that segment, Holly, uh, if we were to retail this, this would be in that 20 
dollar range. Yeah, about that. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, it, worth every penny though. A hundred percent worth every penny in that twenty dollar range. Do they do they make anything in the ten to fifteen range, mm-hmm. Christian? This is it. This is, this it. is it. Yeah, everything's going to be around that twenty dollar. But it'd be impossible for all the quality you're getting in that bottle yeah, right now. Yeah, exactly. Right? Absolutely. And you know you, the current ranges that we're coming pulling fruit from, you know, require in the the oak barrels and things like that. Or you know, it's, it's hard to get into a, almost impossible really to get into a price range like that. Yeah. So Napa is going to be your most expensive fruit. Sonoma is right right next to it. I right. mean, it's yeah. I put you know I think of it like real estate. You know, if somebody says, "Hey, where do you live?" And you say, "I live in Virginia." Right. You're like, "Oh, that's cool. Where do you live in Virginia?" You could live in Southwest Virginia, where real estate is a lot less expensive. But if I say oh, I live in Northern Virginia, you know, we we just got you know, okay, we're narrowing it down. It's getting more expensive. <laughs> where do you live in Northern Virginia? I live in Alexandria, Virginia. Okay, where in Alexandria? I live in Old Town, right? So now you just told me you live in the most expensive real estate market in the country. Yeah. Same thing with the grapes, right? We could pull grapes from the the Great Central Valley of California, where maybe they're three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars a ton. But maybe they're three thousand or five thousand dollars a ton coming from Sonoma County, and then you add on that we're using real oak barrels. We're not, you know, staving it. We're not chipping it. Um, you know, things like that. So I just don't want people to take a pass on this if they get. I, you don't. I don't. I don't think there's any sticker shock at nineteen ninety nine, but it is worth that extra five bucks totally, if not more, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, this is. This is a value, actually. I mean, you know, you could you could pay more for this and be happy. So, I think the price point is is excellent for. I think it screams like twenty nine ninety nine, but we're going to be selling it for nineteen ninety nine at CaseWineLife.com yeah. <laughs> because we're you not greedy. Like Ten bucks. We, yes, we, yeah, that's that's what we do. It. That's, that's how we do. Love it. Um, and we're not greedy. We just want to introduce people to to great wines. And this is true, real Pinot Noir. Um, you know, there's nothing blended in it. There's no petite Syrah or other grapes blended in here. And so if you, you know, are get, just getting into wine and want to really understand, uh, you know, what all the fuss is about, about Pinot Noir, or, you know, want to want to try a tried and true Pinot Noir, this is a beautiful example of, of how Pinot can express Tried itself. and true. Thank you, Larry. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Very, I, we're going to have to come back to this, but I know we... We have limited time, but <laughs> off, camera, off, off, no, off, off camera, we're off. definitely going to come back to this Banshee Pinot Noir. <laughs> Ashley Sylvester, you are a beast. Matt Props, love you. Going to um, find you on Instagram later and give you a billion likes. But okay, what's what's next, Christian? Oh, we're going to move over to the Alexander Valley. We're going to taste Roth Estate. Cool. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Alexander Valley, not too far from the, from the Russian River Valley, right? Not, not too far, not too actually. Far. Actually butts up, you know, from a ABA perspective. So Roth Estate Winery is, is actually in the Chalk Hill subregion of the, uh, of the Russian River Valley, the winery itself. But the grapes for our Cabernet come from Alexander Valley. Why, you might ask, because it's the best place in Sonoma County to grow Cabernet. It is it, the muscle. <laughs> yeah, it's the warmest region. It's tucked up right against the Mayakama Mountains that separate Napa and Sonoma. As we know, Napa known for Cabernet. You know, really? Yeah. <laughs> you're, the no, you're the no California cab show, didn't you say I know, that? I, I, had, I had to throw that facetious yeah. no <laughs> in there. Sorry. Up, yeah. This is not the Cali cab show. We are drinking an Alexander Valley cab now That's right. from the yes. prestigious Roth Estate. That's right. That's right. I love it. I love it. So, you know, Roth was founded in, in 2001, but we're going to back it up to 1995 when a gentleman named Ted Simpkins uh, founded both of these wineries. So Ted Simpkins, a wine executive, creating his own winery, also at the same time, or around the same time, uh, researching who his biological parents are. So Ted is adopted, and he finds out that his father was a Lancaster and his mother was a Roth. So he creates an estate property that's about 53 acres. I don't want to see all thunder from Lancaster yet, but he names it after his father. And then he creates a brand and names it uh, after his mother. But, but these were both his creations. These weren't in existing companies. Correct. Okay, Correct. awesome. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, Lancaster is dedicated to the estate. Roth is dedicated to best grape, best place in the county. And so it, Roth, you know, we say we're bold, we're unapologetic, and we're, you know, Cabernet driven. So this is the, the flagship for Roth. Uh, it's a really beautiful spot. If you find yourself in Sonoma County, you know, it's right on Chalk Hill Road. 
It's right across the street from the Chalk Hill Estate Winery, which uh, you know, Foley Family Wines. We also own that too. Yeah, <laughs> which is really cool. So, but if you're going to be in California, if you're going to be in Sonoma County, you know, you can do Chalk Hill. You can literally, you know, look left, look right, hold the wheel, make sure no cars, no bicyclists <laughs> are coming, and you can drive across the street in the Roth. And then about four or five miles up the road is Lancaster. So you could have yourself a really nice day in wine country at Chalk yeah. Hill, uh, Roth, and Lancaster. Um, I'm going to take that as an invite, Holly. Yeah. It, I think so. <laughs> from, you, from you guys, of course. Head on out there. And awesome. We can do a little we, show from there. Right? We need to do a vlog. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. I like it. All right. We're, we're tagging we're, along. We're, we're live on set at uh, Roth Estate. We can play some cornhole. They got cornhole. They've got uh, some really beautiful cave systems. Uh, nice. at, at Roth as well for aging our wines. We have the largest solar field in Sonoma County at a little over two acres, okay. which is cool too. So using uh, solar power, you know, I, I would say, you know, back to the sustainability point that we talked about at Dashwood, you know, our, our, our vineyards in California are also sustainably certified. You know, we're trying to do the right thing for the right reasons for the future generations, uh, you know, of fully family ownership. Um, you know, for our heirs, <laughs> you know, and you too, America. Right. No, it's not. It's not just about that. Um, Bill Foley is definitely not about case counts and money. Um, he has a huge heart, and you get that. And I, I don't think he would have enjoy the success that he's had today without without having such a big heart. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, you know, gives back a lot. He's actually has a, a foundation called the Folded Flag Foundation that he founded with other uh, fellow West Point graduates. So they, they pick up all the administrative costs for that charity, which is really cool. So He sits on the board of a children's hospital. Yeah. We love that yeah. too. Yeah. He signs his name, not as CEO, but as Vintner. He's, he, he's a wine guy. He's a wine yeah. guy. Yeah. And so we, we, bad props, Bill Foley. We kind of digressed from yeah. Roth doing, there. Doing a lot of cool things. But, but Roth, I mean, I think if you take a look at, at the wine, you know, it's got this kind of dark, inky purple. I think this is a Cabernet's Cabernet, just on the nose, Holly. What, what, you know how they say this is a, like he's a lawyer's lawyer, or you know, this is a Cabernet's Cabernet on the nose, I'm thinking. Yeah, it's, it's beautifully classic for Alexander Alley. Yeah. You know, I mentioned earlier, Sarah Quieter kind of reshaping our winemaking team. She just brought a gentleman over named Michael Bullock uh, from Pine Ridge. He was the general manager of there, so making some really killer wines over at Pine Ridge brought him over to be our executive winemaker over Roth and Chalk Hill. So, you know, this I think is is a great wine, but I'm excited to see what he's going to do with it as well. And we had a, a meeting with him last Friday and he was talking about some of the changes that he wants to do. So, um, you know, he's going to do a little more American oak, a little more extraction, little, you know, so if you like Roth now, you know, buckle up because it's getting, it's getting even better. Yeah, it's, which I'm excited about. This is a delicious Cabernet. And you guys know it's not my favorite grape by any stretch. I'm an Italian wine lover, biased about Italian wines and Italian winemakers without remorse. Um, however, this is a delicious yeah, Cat. so I think, you know, for somebody who loves Italian wine, um, what you kind of get a sense for here is that, I mean, this is a very, I mentioned earlier that Alexander is sort of the muscle of, of, of Sonoma in terms of their cabs. They're big because it's warmer. Right. So, you know, you get this kind of power and this grip in, in here. Um, you know, you get the, the tannins are just going to kind of really get up and coat and you're going to feel them. But there's a, a nice balancing acidity to this. So for people who love Italian wines, I mean, one of the things people love about Italian wines is that they do have that wonderful acidity and freshness to them. Um, Silkiness. And yeah, and you, you get this here too. This is, it's soft on the palate and nice acidity, but you have power to it too. Absolutely. Awesome. Wow. Amazing Cabernet. Brought the State Winery Cabernet Sauvignon Alexander Valley with some Petit Verdo in it, as Stephen Spurrier used to uh, <laughs> pronounce the varietal. Um, and I think uh, Holly has mentioned in the past how Petit Verdo is really crucial to balancing out a, yeah, big, a big fruit like Cabernet. Yeah, it's absolutely. And it just kind of, it's like the, the spice cabinet for a winemaker. You know, it's just going to give it a little mm. bit more, um, a little more. Um, a little bit more like spice, flavor, finesse, um, and color. Um, yeah. Even one percent is going to go a long way yeah. for the color of this. And you get this little bit of a purple hue here, um, and that definitely is coming from some of that petite verdot. Wow, Christian, I did not expect it. This is my first experience with Roth, Roth Estates. Wow, I will be back. We will be revisiting this 
after we conclude the show. Oh, okay. You can guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Well, and the price too, Holly, I would think we could probably sell this for 24 bucks a bottle. 23 maybe? That would be a huge value for yeah. that one. I mean, okay, maybe I misspoke whatever. there. 29. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you thinking, Christian? Uh, what do you used to kind of see in this yeah, around I mean, on yeah, average? Yeah, 30 bucks and yeah. somewhere in between 25 and 30 is... is 25. Your, we're, uh, you know, we're, we want to be accessible yeah. and we really want everyone to experience this. This is not your Cabernet's cab. I was totally wrong. This is an amazing cab that's very reminiscent of, as Holly said, a lot of Italian varietals. It's not, you know, you, you, this is very versatile. Yes. Yeah, this yeah. doesn't just go with a big steak. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, I think you could certainly, if you were having, um, yeah. I would like this with sushi. Go with a small steak. Small, small, <laughs> big steak, small steak. No, but you know, it's it's the it's the stereotype, you know, Holly and I. That you can yeah. only do steak with red with cab and, and I think here you can definitely do more of your game meats. You could do yeah, you know, a good you know, grilled pork chop, you know, uh, grilled mushrooms, grilled vegetables for people who, you know, love vegetables or who are vegetarian, right. you know, good portobello mushroom on the grill. Um, you know, so you definitely have a, a broader range here for, I mean, and I think you could even do, you know, mm -hmm. something, I mean, if you were going to do a piece of tuna on the grill with yes. crushed pepper, you know, just olive oil and some pepper seared on the grill. I mean, I think, you know, if you're a cab drinker and you are going to just drink what you like, right, which right. is definitely one of your, you know, people, are, it's, it's good, drink what you like. Right. Um, and so you could certainly do this with something like this. Um, it would, it, with that little splash of Petit Verdot, I think it would kind of pull out some more of the spice in here if you have something with that crushed pepper. Lovely, amazing, awesome. Christian. Three for three, brother! That's his, his name is Christian Guest. That's right. Now he's going to be Christian's special guest. Oh. With open invite to come oh, back anytime he wants. Anything from ba Banshee, Dashwood, Roth, please. Um, I'm just going to knock on the door, <laughs> Holly, when you guys are recording. Well, of course, you will. You, 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 everyone has her address. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Road. She gets full yeah. tours on Sundays. <laughs> So you're more than welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Come three for three, and, Christian. And enjoy the wines when we're. <laughs> but I know. So we're not saving the best for last because these all, all three of these wines kicked ass. But this Lancaster is looks like something special based on these <laughs> notations that I have here, especially this price point. So, do you, did you really want to open this for me? <laughs> like, like, we, we go way, we go way back. We go way back. So. Wow, those days, you yeah, know, you it's so block nine. Like, the whole going back to prison days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, we weren't in prison happened? together. That's not true. Yeah, let's go. That is that. not, true. not that, true. As you know, um, <laughs> as you may know, I'm a restaurateur. I own a few pizza shops under the name Bazelli's, and Christian was uh, one of my uh, patron. Reps. A patron was, but was at first a patron, uh. then became a friend, and then became a rep. For, for the distributor that he was uh, representing in that time and was really uh, helpful to me, just so, so knowledgeable and, and understanding. And we didn't sell a lot of wine when we first started. Actually, we didn't even open the store with a beer wine license. That came 10 years after the fact. Okay. And so um, I really depended on, on, on Christian because Holly at that time was a lobbyist on Capitol Hill. And so really depended on Christian to kind of kind of uh, show me the ropes of the wine game and I'm so gracious to him for opening what is probably a hundred dollar bottle of wine right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. Cha -ching! Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, cheers. This is that yeah. bottle, you know, you're going to open when uh, people say, oh, we're going to save a bottle for a special occasion. Right. The occasion is when you open the bottle. So, you know, you come home and you're just like, I just need to feel good and just kind of relax, you know, open that special bottle, it'll make it even better. And so this is that bottle. I mean, of course, if you're looking for a bottle to bring to the boss's house or, you know, something like that, then, you know, this is that too. I think when you hold this bottle in your hand, the quality cues jump off, you know, off the charts and the weight of the bottle, the, the quality of the, of the paper on the label, I mean, everything screams luxurious this is very heavy glass folks yeah. very heavy glass so i mentioned earlier you know when we when we expanded our vineyard holdings power purple yeah you know, last year we're ralph lauren purple I'm thinking. Mm, yeah yeah lancaster purple lancaster purple <laughs> foley purple but ralph lauren purple yeah. label not too shabby yeah. but <laughs> so, 
Love it. You know, so what, last year when we expanded our holdings, uh, you know, in, in Alexander Valley, we now became somewhere around the third largest, you know, land holder in Alexander Valley. So we're pretty excited about that. You know, it's the Foley portfolio's number one um, ABA now, American Viticultural Area uh, of land holding. So we have about a thousand acres. So we can you know, access some really great fruit for Roth, for Lancaster. Uh, Lancaster Estate, again, is about a 53 acre piece of property named in honor of uh, Ted Simpkins' father. Um, biological father. Uh, biological yes. father, exactly. So Lancaster, as in War of the Roses, Lancaster. So uh, it were more pop culture, you know, if you're into Game of Thrones, right, the Lannisters, uh, yeah. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. Lannisters. Uh, so um, so that, that's kind of fun. But in Lancaster, at 53 acres, only makes five to 7,000 cases of wine a year, which, as we all know, is not a lot. You know, the, the whole of the 2017 vintage when I visited was was in a maybe 20 by 20 uh, room, all in barrel. It's not a lot of wine, folks. So you we constantly run out, you know, because there's not, and there's not enough to send to the whole United States. You know, so you might get a lot of it stays in California, of course. Maybe we get some in Chicago, New York, Texas, things like that. And we wanted Lancaster to be relevant 365 days a year. So in the 2016 vintage, we created the winemaker cuvee. We are in our third vintage now. We just received 93 points from the wine advocate on this bottle of wine, so we're really excited about that. It's always been cab dominant. That's always the plan. Lancaster is about Bordeaux varietals. Uh, this one is gonna be around 68, 69% Cabernet Sauvignon with the balance being other Bordeaux varietals. So um, you know, when, you, when you look at the wine, when you taste it, you know, and this is, just a really plush. So how many cases are we talking about with this um, skew, Christian? You know, I'm not sure. You know, this is going to be a little bit more uh, production than the estate because we pull some, yeah. some fruit from the estate, mm -hmm. you know, especially some of the newer replantings, some Malbacs, some Merlot, things like that. But we do pull uh, a good amount of fruit from other fully owned or close family relationship vineyards that are around where we, we you know, where the Lancaster estate is. So. Understood. Mm -hmm. Understood. Now let's take a taste. Mm -hmm. It's getting some anise uh, on the nose and some like brown spices. This wine is made by a guy named David Drake, born in California, moved to Alexandria, Virginia, grew up here, so hometown boy. Down the road. Which is pretty cool. Uh, his dad worked for the ATF. He was a director in one of their uh, departments, which was really cool. So he had a lot at an early age, had access to some pretty significant people in the wine and, and spirits industry and beer industry. And so developed this love of wine, actually went to school to be an artist, but then sort of combined his love of art and wine, you know, really winemaking is an art form, right? And so he's been at Lancaster for over two decades. And this winery was only founded in 1995, so he's been our winemaker for a, a really long time. He makes this wine in this in you know in that Lancaster style, that uh, you know sort of rich, opulent, lush style. Um, you know, not saying this is you know a different label than the Estate Cab, so I'm going to make it a different way. Just taking that same approach with the beautiful fruit that he has and making the best possible wine. I think you know with the best possible Merlot, and I do taste the Merlot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in yeah, here. yeah. I don't know what the percentage break is. 17. 17% 17 Merlot? Yeah. Wow. And, and I, it's, it's pronounced, but just delicious, deliciously pronounced. Not too oaky, of course, especially at $100 a bottle, people. We're getting spoiled by my friend Christian here. Lovely. Yeah. Ho Holly, um, Holly, of course, Master of Wine. Uh, what, what, what tasting notes are you, are you um, uh, feeling on the palate? This wine to me is all about structure. I mean, it really is. I mean, you got, like you said, that plushness and velvety, just darkness, dark fruit. Um, all your, you can rattle off the dark fruits, blackberry, and you know, just all those kind of deep, dark. Um, and then you get some of your um, spices, and I mean, this is just a, a but really the, just the, the textures and the, the I'm sorry. yeah. I'm sorry. I. Okay, I had an epiphany mm -hmm. on my second sip. Okay. So I want to see if you concur. <laughs> you guys like talking? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> telepathy. Osmosis. Osmosis shorthand. Mm -hmm. Even better. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. It's definitely going to open up, right? Yeah, this will this is going to evolve, and I mean, you get some of that black cherry and some you know dark plum and, and uh, you know just a little um, maybe a little hint of floral in there. Um, you know, it's just uh, fragrant. Yeah, absolutely. it's absolutely a little perfume. Um, so yeah, it's just a lovely wine. But yeah, this is just all about structure and texture. And how is ninety nine ninety nine in terms of retail? Are we are we giving our Case Wine Life members and watchers and followers um, a deal, or can we do better? I, th I think you know a good price, but you know we can talk offline. I think you might be able to do better. You think you I can know, do a little I don't, better? I don't want to commit you on camera. Here. I'm just not doing numbers. <laughs> Holly, Holly's better with numbers than I am. But um, yeah, I think we can look at sharpening the pencil a little bit for for CaseWineLife.com. You know. So. This is this is a wine where if you were to buy maybe. Um, uh, two cases, which would be 12 bottles, that you might be able to get a little bit of a deeper price break. Yeah. Absolutely. I recommend two cases, if not more. <laughs> Superb. Unbelievable. I mean, this is the Lannister wine um, under the name Lancaster, <laughs> but this is what the Lannisters are drinking on Games of Thrones, I assure you, <laughs> especially <laughs> right after the Red Wedding. But <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Little, wow, little, that little. was like, whoa, what just whoa. happened? What just happened? Game of Thrones reference and I think there. You, yeah, and I think you could have that kind of wow moment with this wine too, and absolutely. Christian, why did it take us so long to get you on our show? That's a you question, bro. <laughs> okay, that's all me. That's, 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 me. that's all me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I profusely apologize to all our, our 57 subscribers, soon to be 57,000. And then to 57 million. I really apologize. We should have had Christian on earlier, dear friend of mine. And um, we I, had to warm up first. We, we, we had to warm up first, especially yeah. for these wines. Wow. I want you get you. I want you guys to get some more likes. You know, some more subscribers before it came out. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this show, we definitely <laughs> will. Banshee, Roth, Lancaster, Dashwood, amazing. All these wines will be on CaseWineLife.com. Um, immediately um, and for, with deep discounts for you guys do not um, waver I mean all of these are crowd pleasers some maybe at some different price points maybe a little some more steeper and, and some not as not as much but all of these are crowd pleasers I think Ollie I mean these these are all Absolutely. It, wedding divorce your friends are gonna <laughs> walk away saying Damn, that was some good juice. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. I mean, let, let's not have a milestone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wednesday night, Grey's Anatomy episode 205. You're, I don't know what. You're picking up a pie from Bazelli's. Right? Yeah. Picking up a pie from Bazelli's mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, if, and if you can uh, afford to open up, you know, shoot a moss now that I know it's back. That's Jamie good. Lannister's, <laughs> you know, go-to red wine. What? So is this a blend? The Lancaster. It is. Yeah. So, so the winemaker's cuvee is a, is a blend. Is exactly. a blend. Yeah. Okay. Is cuvee? Is that? Um, it means blend. That means blend in French. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a delicious cuvee. It's a delicious blend. Um, as everyone knows, blends are all the rage in America. Um, Absolutely. Thanks, thanks for thanks to guys like Dave Finney and and um, Charles Smith and um, Menage a Trois. Menage a Trois, our friends at uh, Carlo Trinquero, of course. My 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 boy at Carlo, uh, my boy at Trinquero. I, I can call you boy. No, my buddy, my my bro, big bromance with <laughs> with Trinquero. But yes, uh, this cuvee is is right up there. Um, amazing. Thank, thank you, Christian. Do we need to know anything? So there's always something going on at Foley because um, Bill Foley does not sit still. He's very proactive. He's uh, Energizer Bunny. Um, is, there, is there anything going on so that our, our, our viewership um, can be uh, abreast? Or, or you know, no breaking news? You know, I'm not going to, you know, there's nothing that I'm aware of, but, but we're always looking to, you know, Add another great estate port uh, wine to our portfolio. You know, like I mentioned at the start, you know, it's all about physical wineries. You know, barrels you can touch, dirt you can kick. And we say real vineyards, real wineries, you know, real wines. So we're we're about physical wineries, less about marketing creations. And so I think you know, in the future, you're going to see hopefully more acquisitions. Um, but you're you know, so good at the marketing and the branding. Oh, well, hundred percent. We've got a great team, and so that yeah. that is not that's not a slight whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. But to 
you know, it's it's important for us and, and Bill as an owner, he wants authenticity. Authenticity. Hundred that's the perfect word. Yeah. 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 He he's not um, he doesn't want anything manufactured. You know, like like some of these wines that you see in various places, mostly gas stations. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't want anything manufactured. I mean, I, I think he's he uh, like they say the old adage: the wine is made in the vineyard. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think I think Bill yeah. says I, I think day and night. I I, heard, I remember a quote at some. He was wine enthusiast man of the year 2010. I think. Yeah. yeah. So um, our marketing director was wine enthusiast marketing. Uh, marketing executive of the year last year, so female, gentlemen, but gentlemen. but all female staff uh, with him. So awesome. yeah, I mean we, we've got a great team, you know, across the board. Whether it's our marketing team, our winemaking team, or our sales team nationally, and, you know, I think our, our best days are ahead of us. Uh, it's definitely an exciting time for Foley, and you know we're uh, we're looking forward to what the future holds. And do do you have membership. a box wine in your portfolio? No. Okay, no. You, Bill Foley would never touch something like that? Well, I, I can't speak for Mr. Foley, but you know, at, at present we don't. You know, our, our plan, our you know, shift over the past few years has been moving away from things where we're competing on price and that kind of two for ten you know, uh, category, really focusing on what you know, Mr. Foley owns, which is estate wineries and lots of vineyards and things like that. So it would be uh, inauthentic for us to, to, to go after something like that. Uh, you know, who knows what the future holds or what potential course, acquisitions may present themselves. So, uh, but you know, at present, you know, really focusing on luxury wines, estate driven, uh, you know, variety correct. Purple you know, label wines. wines and that also complement yeah. this Foley lifestyle um, brand that you guys have cultivated. So we've got Foley Food and Wine Society, maybe yes. what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. So that is something that Mr. Foley created in 2000, around 2010, and that is a, a a wine club of sorts or a rewards club for our fans. It's free to join, which is great. Uh, so it's FoleyFoodAndWineSociety.com, I believe. And you know, for every Foley wine that you purchase, you can actually uh, earn points towards redeeming things like more wine, which is great. This is awesome, Which guys. Please cool. take notes. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to sign up after the show. I did not know this. Yeah, so you can you can redeem it towards uh, stays at some of the resorts that he you know, owns, some of the restaurants that he owns. Are these resorts Napa-based or California-based, so Sonoma-based? We have, we have uh, he, has, he has one in Montana, one in Idaho, one in, uh, he has some properties in New Zealand and California, a couple of restaurants in those areas as well. I also owns the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the hockey team. So you can you know get a Vegas Golden Knights jersey or maybe some tickets or things like that. Good to know. Which is, which is pretty cool. Go well. Knights. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, Mr. Foley is, is well, um, uh, I guess uh, diversified. Yeah, diversified. Thank you. I I, I love that. Did yeah. you know that you can earn points? That's pretty. Um, That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. That is pretty yeah. cool. Okay, awesome. We're definitely going to be doing a lot of business with with Mr. Foley, um, especially on. All these wines, but <laughs> today, I mean, they're four for four, and I'm not a Sauvignon Blanc drinker, but I'm going to be buying that. Pinot Noir, not so much, more Alianico, but I'm going to be buying this Pinot Noir. <laughs> <laughs> cab, as you know, never, but this Cab for sure, and this Cuvée, this blend. Uh, everyone's talking blends these days, but that's the blend you want, um, and I, I, I'm going to just drop the price to 89.99. Just because Man. you're sitting next to me. Right this, it's getting better and better. <laughs> we'll, we'll just keep him drinking. We'll get the price. No, that's <laughs> just right. That's uh, right. Exactly. No, no. Is, there, is this going to be sure fire away? Is this going to be one of those two-hour videos? No, no. We, we can <laughs> conclude. Uh, Holly's phone. She's got six or seven iPhones that are being blowing up. Christian, I know, has to fly out to my Montana to check out check out some resort. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I, wish, I wish that were I just want to tag along. Like, I, wish wait, I, wish I just want to tag along to a hockey game in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but thank you for coming on Christian thank and uh, please like, subscribe, comment. We really appreciate it. And all these watches on Chris Thank you guys.